the Bolvag. How's it everyone? You are listening to Art and History with Bolvag, and today we are going to be focusing on the contemporary art movement known as performance art. Now to many people, performance art can be seen as a little bit... Strange. Now there's a reason behind that strangeness, and let me explain that region, region, reason for just going into a little bit of the history behind performance art. You could say that the closest to the origin of performance art can be seen in the Fluxus movement. Now the Fluxus movement basically started off as an expression of creativity in performance in particular, and this expression of creativity could be absolutely anything as long as it was normal. It was started by a man by the names of Georges Macinius. I hope I'm saying his name correctly, and he wanted to break away from that stuffy conservatism of the 1950s we're particularly known for. Now, you could say that this anti-establishment, this anti-art, this pursuit of the absurd and the abnormal is very similar to Dada from the 1920s under Marcel Duchamp, but Dada is different, because in Fluxus, Fluxus embraced not just visual art, but every creative medium that you can think of, be it performance, be it film, be it music, be it visual artists, be it strange and peculiar creatives. It was a pursuit of the weird, the strange, the fun, the game, the don't take yourself too seriously, and the... He's a lumberjack and he's okay. He sits all night and he works all day. I cut down trees, I skip and jump. I like to press wildflowers. I put on women's clothing and hang around in bars. Now, the 1970s British comedy group Monty Pythons might not directly have been Fluxus, but if they were not influenced by Fluxus, they most certainly were influenced by the social and philosophical circumstances that influenced Fluxus itself. You see, the 1960s and going into the 1970s was an era of change, of rivaling ideas from the past and breaking down of conservative norms. It was a time period of revolution. It was there's a reason why Fluxus became popular in the 1960s. There's a reason why the hippie movement is associated to the 1960s. And the hippie movement's happenings were very similar to the art creative events that Fluxus hosted. And so, you hear how I often say, art doesn't predict history, but it very often reflects the philosophy of the time period. And so you can actually take that, that change in art, that ideal revolution and breaking apart the old, and see that, you know what, that is actually what is going on in, in society and in politics in the time period. Now one such artist that we're going to be looking at as our main example in this video is Joseph Bass, and his artwork, I Like America and America Likes Me. Now Bass was a Fluxus artist, but he was also a well-known performance artist. And we're going to have a look at this video now. Noch im selben Jahr ist Beuys wieder in Amerika. Aber er betritt den amerikanischen Boden nicht. Er will Amerika nicht sehen. Mit dem Krankenwagen lässt er sich in die Galerie René Block bringen. Das ist seine Art der Rache für die jahrzehntelange Missachtung europäischer Kunst durch amerikanische Galeristen.
So, to many people, that video may come across as a little bit strange, but it's actually very deep and has some pretty interesting and serious messages. So, just to see what I'm getting at, I'm going to explain what actually happened in that performance. It starts off with Joseph Bice line landing in America. He's picked up by an ambulance. He's taken to an art gallery, and in the art gallery is an enclosure of sorts where he has to live for three days alongside an initially wild coyote. At first the coyote is very suspicious of him, but towards the end they actually form a bit of a friendship and his time in the enclosure ends with him giving the coyote a hug and actually spending a lot of time together before he has to be bundled up, shipped off back into the ambulance and out to the airport back to Germany. There is a lot of symbolism in this. So the first symbol you need to look at is Joseph Weiss is he was German, and as a German, he was a German citizen, not an American citizen, thus never setting foot in America, is symbolic of him never being accepted as an American, as a person of the land. The second element of it is that he was bundled up and thrown together with a coyote. Now, a coyote is very often a symbol of Americans or Native Americans or the most local people who live in America. And at first, this American is very suspicious of Joseph Bice. But towards the end, after a prolonged period of time, the coyote quite likes his company. And so this is symbolic of him as a foreigner coming into the land of America and initially being feared and despised and having his blanket torn up and not wanted in the space. But towards the end, the American, the symbolic American, in this case, grows to appreciate him just before he has to be bundled up and sent off back to Germany because his visa has expired. Another thing that you also need to look at is, although the concept behind it is not so strong in this particular video, Joseph Weiss was also obsessed with the idea of Native Americans or Native nomadic peoples. The reason for all this was he made up a story, now sadly the story is made up because it's a cool story, when he was flying as a Stuka gunner in World War II, he was shot down over Lapland, Finland, and he made a story up that he was saved by local nomads who wrapped him up in fur and fat. Now, fur, fat, and local nomads have thus become a sort of signature in all of Joseph Byte's artwork, to one extent or another. Unfortunately, the story is not true. He was actually saved by German soldiers, um, but he used that very much to create a mythology behind his persona as an artist. And this is also why he used the symbol of a coyote. You see, a coyote doesn't just represent local Americans, it is also a symbol for Native Americans. Um, there we see his symbols, sort of his signature crossover, coming back into his art. Now the reason for this was he believed that nomadic, native, local people, whatever you might call them, had a much stronger connection to what it was to be human, what it was to communicate, what it was to live honestly. And his origin story in many ways symbolized his awakening, his rebirth. This was a man who was shot down flying for the Luftwaffe. That was the wrong side of World War II with regards to the good guys. 
he was a heckless youth. His art, he wanted to reverse that history and create someone who brought people together. Anyway, so just back to what the artwork is, I like America and America likes me. Although it's strange at first, it's actually quite deep. And that is something you're going to constantly find throughout the rather peculiar art called performance art is, although it is strange, although it's sometimes utterly absurd dating back to its um, fluxus origins, it can be used to make some very profound and deep statements. And, yeah. I hope you enjoyed that video. Please like, subscribe, and... <laughs> what a gorgeously satisfying day this has been. And so many bargains. I'm wearing an... I guess you'd call it an apres ski outfit for this rather chilly evening. I think it's quite appropriate in this setting as well. So that's all from me. Thank you.